<laughs> Good evening. It's 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Is the uh, the 14136. Oh, the Swiss bank account. Yes. yes. <laughs> if I were smarter, I might know what zip code that is. But... Are you available? The you the one the the telephone number one four one three six. I believe that's we got it. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Up oh, now you're muted again. There you go. How about now? How about now? There we go. Yeah. Bear with me. I'm new to all this. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are we there? Can you You're hear me? On. We can hear you. We lost the picture. We lost your, there's your video. Yeah. Yeah. We're all set. How about, how about now? That's good. Good. We Perfect. can hear you and see you. Perfect. I'm, I'm not knowing who you are. All I know is you're 14136. I'm Tim Keita. Uh, I live at Seven Mount Warner Road. And just here to talk about a property that me and my brother bought, 234 River Drive in Hadley. Um, I would like to ask for permission, I guess, to currently the shop that's there has one window and a garage door on the roadside. So uh, hang on a close sec. that. Let me uh, let me bring up what we're talking about since he, he did Where, just which, that. which who's whose property is that? Uh, it's it? me, me and my brother Jason under North Adley Properties LLC. It, it was Pip Store. Oh, it okay. was the Pip, the Pip, oh, okay. the Pip okay. Store. Yeah. I'm not good at all this stuff, so I sent some images to Bill today. <clears throat> oh, is that on the corner? No. Uh, it's right across from Mount Warner, if you will. It's it's right in the couple, center. Couple of... couple houses up. Okay. Across from North Abbey Hall, basically. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So currently, there is a garage door on the front of the shop, and that awning, I guess you will. I would like to close that door in, put one man door in the middle, and another window on the right hand side, and put a portico over the man door. Okay, let me show you and, that. And vinyl side the front of the house or the front of the shop, I'm sorry. And then on the house, there's two awnings. Can I click on those, Bill? No, I'll have to click on them. Okay. So on the front of the house, there's two awnings, two doors. I would like to put porticos over each of those doors as well. Which would look something like what's on the... Yeah, I'm no, I'm no draw. I'm, <laughs> I'm far from a from a uh, drawer, so if you will. You're gonna get, what are you gonna do about the garage? You're not gonna use it as a garage. What are you gonna do with this? So I own T Keats of Plumbing and Heating in Hadley. Uh, I'd like to put some office space in there. Oh, so this, is for, oh this is for drive. this is for the Keats of Plumbing and Heating. Correct. Yeah. It'll be, it'll make it'll continue as a business. Correct. Yep. Okay. And along with all of this, Bill, if you could click on the old sign sure so that's the current sign that's there i would like to ask for permission to remove that sign and put the current business sign of something to that effect the building number would be different obviously and and just paint the uh paint the sign full So you're talking about keeping the same pedestal, Tim? Yes. Yeah. Everything would stay the same. It's 55 inches in diameter. Um, and what you see there is a, uh, I guess, a proof from sign techniques in Chicopee. They would be the ones removing the old uh, placard, if you will, and installing the new. I don't. I don't see a problem with what he wants to do. It's a pre-existing, non-conforming. 
the existing non-conforming use, you're right, and not making it any bigger. So seems like a go. I appreciate oh. it. Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We yeah, got to make motion still... and take care of our paperwork. Okay, here I'm, st I'm still here. <laughs> what is the address, 224? 234. 234 River Drive. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for the minor alterations. Second. So you want to enclose? I just want to write that because I, I want I send a uh, uh, do we have this on a in a thing someplace, Bill? Yes, I'll email it to you. Okay, great. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Who is the second? Right. Uh, Mike Sosinski, any uh, any lighting changes? No, there is a currently there is a light on the each on each side of the sign that are on a switch. As you can see in that picture there, nothing would change with that. And the and the vinyl siding, you said that was going to be hot pink. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> purple stripes in between. I just want to dress the place up a little bit. It looks pretty plain. It's pretty outdated, if you will. Back in, just, the late, back in the late 60s, a guy named Chuck had that garage, and I think he still owes rent on it, so I don't know. If... <laughs> <laughs> what did you have in mind? Something uh, neutral to match the neighborhood? or As far as color? Yeah. I was just going to go with white to match the house. I don't think we'll have a problem with that. Just an anything's better than what you're looking at right now, as far as I'm concerned, but... <laughs> Just needed to come on here and ask for approval, you know? Sounds good. Okay. Anyway, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck, Mr. Kitsa. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. Tim, Thank you before you, Tim, before you go, I'm going to email you um, a document that I'll ask you to sign and return to me just outlining what we're not the last word on any of this. We okay, still have sure. to talk yep. with the building inspector and yep. uh, and other boards. Uh, so I will send you that and uh, just uh, sign it and get it back to us. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up. Um, I think Eric, well, I have Mark Dean, but is I. Is Mark with the development team or? Uh, yeah, we're, I'm with Ideal. Okay. Bill, I've got, I've got to submit something. I, I sent you guys an email today. I don't know if I'm yeah, next it, up or. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you are. Okay. Just before we get to the Ideal Mover stuff, because I'm with that too. Um, so this is for Bill Handrich over on Moody Bridge Road. I, I sent uh, an email, I want to say maybe a, a week ago. Uh, so Bill and his wife are doing an, an AP, they're getting an APR on his property. Um, and Bill, I don't know if you've got the attachment from the email. If not, I can pull up the plan and just walk folks through it. It's I'm really just requesting a special permit. And so I've got the application that I submitted and then we can get you the, uh, uh, the envelopes, Jimmy, and mark this up for hearing um, yeah, whenever the you, board's ready. If you have a handy, go ahead. Yeah, what, I will. what's the street number on Moody Bridge? Oh, that's a good question. I wanna say 30, I don't, I don't know it off the top of my head, Mark, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Bill, could you just, could you uh, enable me? Yep, please? you're all set. <laughs> So hopefully everybody can see the, the plan. This will be coming uh, before you at some point in the future. And so Moody Bridge runs, this is, you see the cardinal directions, north, south, runs from the south, comes up, and then obviously takes that turn by the um, conservation area. This is the Handrich property. It's all of this land here, including this lot two back here. Um, the Handrich Homestead uh, looks like it's 50 mark, by the way, okay. right here. Do, do, so you have the, do you have the plan that had the color on it? Because that might help. 
Uh, yeah, I would have to. That's okay. That's okay. I, I just... Okay. I'll, I'll continue with this and then I can always switch yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Other one. Um, so right here, you've got the house and right here, if you follow my cursor, you have the driveway. This house actually exists on this lot here and it's and the assessor has this as a separate parcel. Uh, so there's, I think, like three parcels here all together. There's this one right here. There's this portion right here. And then there's a third one right here. Uh, I think it's 21, 21A, and then uh, parcel 20. And so as we were, um, as I was working with the attorney from uh, DAR and MDAR uh, and the surveyor, you know, we, we noticed that uh, the access is occurring over this piece of property, which is ultimately going to be subdivided through that A&R process, and then ultimately an APR is going to be put on it. So I had sent an email to the board last week asking how we should be handling this. And the suggestion, I think, rightly was uh, come in for a Section 5.7 special permit because it's access over something other than the frontage of this lot right here. And, and so this is a driveway. I think it's maybe... 10 or 12 feet that has been in existence. And this is the way that he has accessed his homestead here. So um, really what we're looking to do is just submit for a special permit to get on. Obviously we'll take any comment that you have, but to get on for a future hearing ahead of actually um, putting on that APR just so that we're not uh, running afoul of your zoning bylaw. So that's kind of the quick and dirty of it. I do have the colored one available. Oh. I'll stop sharing then. Okay. Yeah, because then you could talk about what the intent is with each colored parcel. I just sure. thought. Yeah, that's excellent. So the, the yellow highlight um, is going to be the, the house lot, so-called. Yeah. Um, right now, you'll see that there's that little bump out. Um, it's, it's called out as parcel A on the plan. That does not currently exist, but it will exist um, as part of the APR, and that's going to be added to that house lot. You have the blue outline, which is the entirety of the APR, and then you have that green carve out, which is the APR exclusion. So one of the things uh, Mr. Handrich wanted to do was to carve off enough for um, his daughters to have uh, buildable lots in the future. And so that's why he's done that exclusion right where you see it in that in that green. Um, but from the northerly edge of his property line running easterly to southeasterly to that uh, yellow lot, that's where the driveway goes. So, you know, I think on a technical level, we're looking at that section 5.7 uh, special permit. So the APR is going to have as their point of entrance the same driveway that you're asking for. Correct. I didn't think they allowed that. They haven't had any issue with it. Nobody has brought it up to me, which maybe I should ask. Um, but I mean, they've been out there. They've recorded because the bill. They, 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 uh, they like to have an exclusive uh, driveway limited just for that. For the APR land. Yeah, so Christine Smith, the attorney with MDAR, hasn't said anything about it. And in fact, you know, we, we specifically talked about uh, the driveway because it's been in existence. And so we had the surveyor give us a sense of the width of it. Uh, I think it's like 12 feet in width. So they're well aware of it and haven't balked at its existence or um, the Handress's continued access utilizing it. So the APR looks like it will have frontage on, um, <clears throat> it'll have frontage on Moody Bridge Road. So where they don't like to play is if their only, if their only access is over a, a right of way, but they don't mind having a right, letting you have a right of way over the APR land. So yeah. they could, right. So they could come in south of your driveway and then cross your driveway. Yeah, so I think as it exists, and I had uh, Barry Roberts actually um, hazed the field for that lot too, and I had to have him sign something uh, last month, so I actually traveled this way. You actually enter 
um, where the existing driveway enters, you travel along the property line. And then when you get to that bend, you just keep going due east instead of southeast. And that'll, that'll get you to the fields where they actually pay. Got it. So be yeah, I, I was just making the comment because there was someone that wanted to put a uh, a electrical line underneath a right of way that uh, I had for APR land, and they denied it. So they they said it should be unencumbered by other other uses. Interesting. But uh, that's. That's between you and the APR people. Right. The APR gods. Um, yeah, so Jim, I can get you the, I mean, if you want to, between, uh, you know, Mr. Dwyer figuring out the hearing schedule and you letting me know how much we owe you and we can drop off the envelopes, either mail them to your house or drop them off uh, at your house if that's still a good way to do it. Yep. And then, you know, get this um, taken care of. So the presumptive date would be the first meeting of December, which is December 7th. Um, Pearl Harbor Day. As it happens, that is also the continuation date for the Michelson Accessory Apartment, which may or may not proceed. And then the next alternative would be uh, Tuesday the 21st, which is completely open. I'd say the seventh, I just know that bills are gonna get this done as soon as possible. Um, and I don't know that he would convey until, obviously there's an appeal period associated with it, but um, I don't know that he will actually place the restriction. And I think he wants to get it done by, as I was sure Endar was, wants to end the calendar year. So seventh would be good. I don't think you'll have a problem on a seventh, Tom. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I don't, I'll have to look at the filing fees and stuff and all that stuff, but okay. I will, I will get you that, that form filled out and then you can just get me two, two copies of the envelopes. I'll do that. And maybe so I can help you guys out. Do you just put a, a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 in those envelopes? Because I'm, I'm happy to run them through our postage meter. Um, I just never know what the weight's going to be. But if you just put a single piece of paper in there, we can figure that out really easily and, and then get you actually, you know, stamped and addressed envelopes to make your life a little easier, unless you like stamping them. So stand your single piece of paper is fine. Yeah, so that's all that goes in here is one piece of paper. Okay. Okay, so public hearing Tuesday, December 7th at 6.45. Thank you very much. We had two other, let's see, let me stop sharing. We had two other people come in, uh, Trent Lavakis. Are you with the um, Ideal Movers or? Hi, um, I, I'm with. I'm a reporter with the uh, reminder, so I'm just here observing. And okay, right now, just to report on the meeting. All right, great. And then we have Troy Tanzer. I might put Troy in a, a hot seat. So Troy's uh, just graduated uh, this past spring from Western New England. He's waiting to get his bar results bill. So he's been waiting since July, and he gets them on Monday. So he's. Okay. Hopefully I can say he's going to, he's an attorney in my office, but he's, uh, he's not there yet. So he's joining to watch uh, okay. the best planning board in the, in the state work. <laughs> <laughs> Being buttered up by the best attorney. Right. There, oh, see, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to resurrect Peter McConnell? Uh, That's, he's, <laughs> he's met Peter. He knows. He knows. Okay. Troy, okay. Troy, Mike Sarzinski, do you know anything about the Dover Amendment? <laughs> <laughs> How's that buddy I'd read, Pete up, read up on it if I were you. <laughs> Tom, how's our buddy Pete doing? He's good. He's good. He was in uh, a couple of weeks ago, okay. maybe two weeks ago. He came in. Um, as you guys probably know, Ronnie Birkin uh, passed away, so he had gone. He came in on a Friday and went to that wake, and 
he's doing well. Uh, his wife, Susan, had both her hips replaced and they're living in Chatham. And, you know, he, one of these days I told him it's virtual now. He might as well, you know, he might as well appear and say hi. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, if that's it, then we will move on with the public hearing for the uh, ideal movers. We'll read the notice as it appeared in the Gazette. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of ideal movers for special permit farmland preservation to construct a building of 96,500 square feet at 10 Mill Valley Road. This equates to approximately 10.5 acres of TDR. The plans and applications are available upon request via email or et cetera, et cetera, to have the planning at have the MA or visit town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, um, October 1 and 8. And with that. Which public, is this the going to take TDR or is this the, I'll take it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is this the site plan? No, this is or, the TDR. No, this, this is, is the TDR. Okay. Yes, so special permit. For the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst here on behalf of Ideal Movers for its application for transfer of development rights uh, for its site on South Maple Street. Um, so as I had also emailed the board, one correction to that legal notice, but I don't think it's prejudicial or any other notices would be required. You know, for accuracy, there's that one building with about 96,500 square feet, and I believe a, a second building at 4,000 square feet. So for a total of about 100,500 square feet, as is, is I read that footnote, it's 75,000 gross uh, square feet floor area cumulative on the site through building or buildings. So I just want to make sure we're getting the approval for, for what we need. Um, and so when I take the 100,500, subtract the 75,000 from it, I can come up with 25,500 as the difference divided by 2000, because that's, I think the additional floor area you get for each um, acre of, of farmland that you preserve. So I get 12.75 acres. Um, I mean, pretty simple request here. I know we had talked about it before. I know town council had opined as he had opined. And so that's obviously why we're in front of you. Our, our one request here, so after finding out hopefully from Mr. Dwyer what the uh, per acre rate is, um, as we had also discussed, the applicant um, is going to be doing some water line improvements of the existing water line from just a little bit north of the uh, rail trail crossing south down to the property. Um, and the request would be to utilize all or a portion of these funds towards that water line improvement instead of digging them twice, one for the water line and one for the, the TDR. To do that, um, you know, I don't know that the, the board has the authority. If the board believes it has the authority, by all means, I'm not going to question it. But, but if they don't believe they have the authority, uh, then I think we'd be looking at a variance. And so I just wanted to get, it a, get a sense from this board whether or not that variance would be supported or if you would be looking at it as this money goes to what it goes for and separate and distinctly, you've got to pay for this waterline improvement. So that's the only little... Uh, nuance to to the request besides just a straight you know please grant this i don't think the planning board has authority to make that deal the tdr is pretty pretty specific that the funds should go into the tdr fund um so we can't weigh from that could the zba do the wheeling and dealing um Maybe. So <clears throat> I brought up uh, 17.14, alternate method for TDR transactions. Um, an app, in lieu of transferring development right, in lieu of going out and shopping for your own development rights, an applicant for a special permit may make a cash contribution to the town of Hadley to be used for the purpose of purchasing agricultural preservation restrictions, period. So um, I don't know 
that that even gives elbow room for a variance. But you suppose you could always ask. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of what we had done as the kind of the predecessor to your affordable housing trust and just whether or not, and in that instance for the East Street Commons, we had gone through a variance process, a simultaneous hearing with planning and zoning and the ZBA granted the variance and then allowed you know that payment in lieu. Um, again, we wouldn't wanna go through a variance process if the planning board wasn't gonna uh, support or at least not object to uh, that process. And I, I would think we'd wanna get the select board involved um because they're the keepers of the water lines i'll call them uh, amongst other things so tom could you clarify the uh the contribution let's just assume that the contribution is going to go for improving the water line now is the town asking you to pay the full amount for improving the water line or just a portion of it so I, I believe in, in Bucky, maybe I'll have you jump in here because I know you've had a little bit more involvement with the nuts and bolts of this. Um, but I, I believe it was going to be the applicant's expense to do that work from just north of the uh, rail trail, so-called, to the project site. Bucky, I don't know if that's accurate. Well, in my conversation with the DPW and uh, what I've heard from this board um, is that the, the municipal infrastructure ultimately would be the town's responsibility. It's, you know, if we were going to wait around for a few years, you know, there, there would be no question about who would be paying for that water main. It would be the town. This is really a question for the select board, and we have not gone up in front of them yet. Yeah, it... it if certainly if they uh if they were going to pay for that regardless but if they were going to reduce the town share that would not from a legal point of view but just from a oh. uh, understanding point of view uh, i would i would go before the select board and say look at these are the taxes you're going to get from the project help us out but no, but also too, there's some legal aspects involved because I know there was either in Southampton or maybe Northampton that uh, the town is required, if it is zoned, this had to do with a subdivision, the town is required to provide water for that particular development. Bill, do you recall that, what town it was? No, I don't. Okay. And... Uh, I was wondering how that finally came out. You understand what I'm saying, Tom? Yeah, I, I do. And so I think what we'll probably do is leave it as is, you know, given the language of the bylaw, and then we'll have that conversation with the select board and we'll figure out what their response is. We'll, we'll keep this board in the loop just in case we determine that there should be a little bit of, you know, maybe it's half of the money that we explore going towards it, if it's going to be the responsibility of the applicant to do those improvements. So I guess I would say we're not asking for anything besides just the, the TDR special permit tonight. And as things start to evolve, we'll, we'll keep you in the loop. Oh, has, has there ever been a case before us where the applicant provides town infrastructure? Trading away yes. something, trading away something yes. else? Yeah, the yes. malls, the malls, you know, fixed up the road and uh, the water line, part of it on South Maple Street. I mean, in recent history. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> extended the history to me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> we extended the water main on Shattuck Road on uh, uh, Mr. Bercume's nickel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so the clear it was built into the, the housing building. Brought up. That uh... right. we, we, we could always come back and revisit this too, depending on what, what goes on. But at least the thing to do right now is to uh, get things at least approved. And, and that you got, I mean, you got a few years before you're going to be doing anything, anyways, I think, or not. And so you'll at least get things lined up. And if it comes back to do some negotiating with various boards, then we can address that at a, at a different time. That sounds perfect. Thanks. Yeah, and to Tom Reedy, one editorial comment. 
you know who Diogenes was? Uh, the, the guy who wandered through the world with a lamp looking for an honest man. Oh, jeez, Joe. <laughs> when you brought up the, the corrections, uh, I said, that's uh, very good of you. Thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down the Diogenes so I can actually look up the the fable later. Okay, that's right. So this so the twelve point seven five acres and the latest price we have on APR is nine thousand one thirty six per acre. That's a contribution of one hundred sixteen thousand four hundred eighty four dollars. What's that number again? One one six four eight four. So let me uh, ju just bring this up, just so everyone will see. And Tom, I have sent this to you. I uh, did um, not have success reaching uh, our friends at DAR, um, but uh, I did go to the registry and just look at APRs that have been recorded in Hadley in the past three years, which is the standard, the average price. And you see the uh, per acre is all over the place, but average price, as Jim said, comes to 91.36. Do you know which one that June conveyance was? Uh, that was Nibala on the farm on uh, South, uh, on East, the south end of East Street. Okay. Next to the, um, I think pretty much next to the Young Men's Club. Okay. It's a good price per acre. It is, it's about as much as they would pay. I think they have a hard cap of 20,000, at least they used to. Yeah. So um, Mark had asked a question earlier about how, um, how the state calculates this. And I've got to say, we're not entirely sure they uh, get a survey. The survey um, tries to figure out what the highest and best commercial use would be. And um, the appraisal is based on, well, they do the appraisal based on the highest uh, commercial use. Um, and they calculate, uh, strip out various things like costs of development and what is or isn't developable. So um, the um, the March 2021, 143 acres was um, the food bank farm on Shattuck, off of Shattuck Road, which was not, uh, you know, it's a lot of acres, but not a lot of developable acres. And the, uh, the other one was uh, a part of the West Farm, and I don't know what part, but probably not the part with frontage on multiple roads. Thank okay. you. Okay, so that was the 9136 times 12.5? 75. 12, hmm? 12.75. 12.75. That gives the 116.484. So 9316 times. Didn't clear everything there. Nine one three six times twelve point seven five equals one one six four eight four. It. I had my APR inspection today, and they they want to know if I'm being a good steward of the land and is it maintain good quality, putting a cover crop on, maintaining the ditches, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I asked the person how many acres that Hadley had in APR, and I'll get that answer to the planning board. We're, I think we have the largest amount of acreage for agricultural preservation for directly to farming in the, in the state. That would not surprise me. Yeah. Our efforts have succeeded. And you know, it's it's changed a little bit. Uh, the uh, the option clause is something that I'm not happy with because when 
we were originally selling it to the, the farmers, they, we made it clear that it's their land or whatever the best in, uh, paycheck they can get, they can sell it for that. But then the state put a cap on it. And they said that's so we could encourage young farmers to get involved in agriculture. But uh, I don't think you're going to see many young farmers unless those people who inherit a farm that will be farming. So on the farmland preservation special permit, I'll make a motion to approve at a transfer price of $116,484. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. What's the value of this building that's going up? Any idea, ballpark? Bucky, Mark, you guys have an idea? I do not. Uh, you have to give me a second. For I don't have an idea what it's going to cost. <laughs> I think he's That's figuring it out right now. Uh, Pretty pricey, I'll tell you that. It's uh, somewhere around nine and a half million. Wow. What are the taxes on nine and a half million? Enough for a, a water bunch. Line. Quite a uh, bit. Almost yeah. as much as your yearly pay, Mike. Yeah, well, close, but you know, you're, they're getting there. But uh, <laughs> so, what's the tax rate? A dollar, fourteen dollars per thousand. Uh, twelve fifty is what we're. Twelve fifty seven is what we're looking at currently. I think. Hundred eighteen seven fifty. Yeah. At, at that rate. I think I would point that out to somebody. That's yeah, a great, it's a great <laughs> point. Remember, the cost of construction does not necessarily equate to the value of the of the constructed property. So, yeah, pass that along for what it's worth. Yeah. yeah. So if that were the case, if that were the case, my parents' home would be uh, North Alley would be still assessed at fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> We ready to approve the other ones, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I think we have we have to reopen the site plan approval public hearing, and then um, I think we have to go down the punch list of what is left open on that before. Okay. And then I'll do a, a I'll do a, a comprehensive motion to that'll cover both of these. Okay. Yeah, it was a good move that they finally came to some agreement regarding the water. And uh, I guess it's kudos to highway department, water department, and to you too, Bucky. And to town, you know, and for getting the ordinances reworded towards the original intent. Yeah. I'm just grateful that Ideal Movers is keeping their business location in Hadley. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, they've got one in South Deerfield too. I just... So back to Tom. I'm sure you have your agenda to go through with us on checklist items from our last time. Lucky, do you have those? Um, you know, I'm surprised that I don't have that at my fingertips at the moment, the checklist. Hang on, give me a couple of minutes. Oh, Most of it wasn't on my plate, so I kind of brain dumped it, but I'll, I'll dig them up. So what was, uh, what was the last time you were in? September, late September. Okay, September 21. Sounds correct. Uh, yep. Um, so I think the the farmland preservation 
let's see, a couple of things here. Um, you still need your variance yep. mm -hmm. on your pork cashier. And that's happening next Tuesday night uh, with the ZBA, 6 p.m. Um, we did talk about the permit expiration, but I think we figured out it is at least, uh, it's three years subject to renewal. Yep. Um, there was a question about the water connection, which has now been resolved. And I think that was part of our concern that there were just, uh, I have a note, Dr. Zagrodnik said too many open items between the TDR and the variants. Um, now they're, they're being pinned down. So um, um, I think variance is the only open item. Um, so I guess, are we comfortable doing a uh, condition on their getting a variance since it's not an integral part of, well, it's an, an important part of the design, but not the, the biggest part of the design. I'm comfortable with that. And the variance is gonna be for what again? Side yard setback for the porta cocher. It's just oh, that's uh, right. Yes, yes. Right, okay. those support yeah. structures. Right. And we were supposed to be on last evening, so we had scheduled it. So we were done by the time we got here. But I think there, um, it wasn't posted with the town clerk, so they couldn't officially hold the hearing last night. It, it was published uh, in the newspaper, and the butters got noticed. So they appeared last evening. Continued it to uh, Tuesday. Okay. Next Tuesday at, at six. So, I have a note from the twenty first about requesting a two year expiration on the special permit for soil preloading. We did a little more digging on that, and three years is the standard now. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, Bucky, I'm going to turn to you for the uh, revision date of the latest set of plans that you're working on. Okay. Uh, that we are working at on. The, I'm just going to pull up the last set that was submitted September 15th is the site plan date. I want to make sure the title sheet agrees. Yes, September 15th, 2021. And that uh, was one that you sent with a Dropbox link or something like that? Yeah, the, the, I haven't changed the plan since prior to the September 21st meeting, so that would be the same set. Okay. Um, and if you want, I can just double, you know, send it after this meeting or even right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to be, just to be sure that, um, uh, uh, just to be sure that we have the latest set, if you would just resend the last set or the final set. And does that, well, it doesn't exactly show the, it shows where your water connection is going to be. To the best of the DPW's guess, <clears throat> right now we do have to physically locate it because it's uh, you can't detect it magnetically. Okay, so um, and um, remind me, Tom, did you ask for any waivers from anything in site plan approval? I don't think you did. I think we did. Ultimately, no. So we were talking right. about the sign and we let that go. Right. And we talked, so, yeah, there were more in the nature of variances, I think. And then we had talked about the sign and then we're okay. going to comply. And then the side yard setback, obviously, we're going to talk with the um, zoning board about. Okay. 
And uh, so uh, just, uh, I know it, it's, I have the email, but remind me what the current, what the name of the property owning entity is going to be. Wait, that did just change. Um, I want to go back to that letter if you give me a moment. And I think I did send that around to everybody. Well, I did get a confirmation yeah. from B B H Real Estate yeah. LLC. Yeah, you beat just me, got you. Um, yeah, beat just me. Got you. <laughs> what was it again? B H Bravo Hotel Real Estate LLC. And that will be the property owner, but uh, ideal movers will be the property occupant. Mover and storage, I guess it is. Okay. And um, I guess maybe one question on the waivers. I'm looking through Berkshire Designs letter. There is a uh, 8.8.1.6. Uh, parentheses five applicant requests a waiver from required sidewalk access for pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Fuck, I don't know if that's still the case or if we had made I any. I thought design. that came up at the very first meeting, and um, it was, you know, I don't know that we had an official statement on that from the board. I think it was sort of assumed to make sense yeah. that a sidewalk through this section. It wasn't particularly important here. It's not going anywhere. I need to go back. Um, but thanks for pointing that out. Submittal waivers. Yeah, I mean, I had waivers for the signs near the lot line, but they didn't apply because they were directional signs. Right. Right, but it was adequate pedestrian and bicycle access, yes. Okay. Um, and we did make that request. All right, I will put that in and we will vote on it as part of the, I don't recall that we took a separate vote on it at the time, but. I don't think uh, so. Uh, sign um, Okay. All right. So I will make a motion to grant site plan to approve your application for site plan approval under section seven of the Hadley zoning bylaw and also the special permit under section 17 um, upon the following conditions. Uh, we'll find that the project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the site plan approval bylaw and of the um, Farmland Protection Bylaw uh, project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood, uh, which is zoned industrial. The intended uses are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Um, work in accordance with the plan set of September 15, 2021. Uh, will satisfy the both bylaws. Uh, planning board uh, has reviewed and granted the following waiver 
Uh, we waive sidewalk access for pedestrian and bicycle access, sidewalk access for pedestrian and access for pedestrians and bicycles to site. Um, copies of the uh, application have been uh, provided as appropriate. Planning board pay, places the following conditions. Design features are considered to be an integral part of the approved design. Approval is for ideal movers and storage only. Um, landscaping must be installed according to the reference plan. Outdoor light fixtures shielded so not to produce strong direct light beyond the property boundaries. No storage trailers, shipping containers, or any other storage facility not depicted on the approved site plans are allowed. This approval does not excuse the project from compliance with other provisions of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw not specifically addressed herein, including Conservation Commission, Building Commissioner, Public Safety, DPW, Board of Health, Water Commissioners, any project changes directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the planning board. Um, prior to application, applicant will participate in a pre-construction conference through the office of the building commissioner. One set of approved plans maintained on site. Um, project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the planning board. Um, maintain a minimum six inch depth of topsoil in all unpaved surfaces in order to retain irrigation water. Um, front yard set re required front yard setback will be identified prior to construction with permanent mon monumentation. Um, reference the site plan approval to the uh, site plan. And this is subject to a zoning variance for the Fort Kasher side yard setback. Also, uh, we'll grant uh, under the farmland preservation, um, purposes of the bylaw are met by payment into a fund, uh, which will permanently protect farmland and agricultural soils. Project is in the receiving district. Uh, special permit is required. Uh, grants a special permit for size of structure and the uh, applicant proposes to make a cash contribution, the payment required for this size is <clears throat> 116,484. And I believe that covers it. So that's my motion. We're gonna do separate ones for business use and aqua for any erosion and sediment control. Um, yeah, I think we, 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 okay. actually I can make it, I can make this one work for business use in the aquifer because that's also a special permit. Okay. I have a module for that. Um, and this uh, permit is granted to ideal to operate in the aquifer district as required by the bylaw, the, um, Site plan shows drainage recharge features, provisions to control erosion. Um, there are no chemicals being stored. And um, so we don't need a definitive operating plan. <clears throat> uh, because the site is located in the aquifer protection, approval is subject to each tenant. Um, so I'll add that. Okay. That is the motion. That is the motion. Do we have a second? I have a second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You got one more yet? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Mexico. And then the other is a permit, but not a special permit. Um, <laughs> That's the right one. Bill does all the heavy lifting and I'm sitting here eating leftover Halloween candy. Well, I tell you, it's a lot, a lot simpler this way. Oh yeah. I forgot, got something and uh, couldn't print it on the spot. Okay. Um, Um, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, the application under section 24, erosion and sediment control for stormwater management. Um, the uh, provisions uh, are, are applicable to the project. The project is not exempt. Post site work is consistent with the erosion and sediment control bylaw. Um, Proposed site work satisfies the performance standards of the bylaw. That's my motion. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Good luck, Bill. There's a, if you don't have a, if you don't have the envelope, there is a copy in our mail slide in the town hall. Okay. Uh, I think I do indeed have them okay. uh, just have to make sure I didn't put, I probably put them in a safe place. So I'd have no trouble finding them the next time. Well, there's another, there's another safe place in a mail slot in town hall. <laughs> okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate your Thank time. You. Long time getting here, but it moves quickly once you, once you arrive. Well, good organization, Mr. Dwyer. I do appreciate your attention to detail on this. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Let's see. I do have one, one invoice to pay. When we put our legal notice in for the zone change, they, only, they put it in two separate ways, and they, invo they invoiced this for only one. I did get the second invoice. And so we need a, I'll make, need a motion or I'll make a motion to pay for the second invoice, second publication for the zone change that we approved the town meeting. The, the amount is $226 and 41 cents. And we have adequate funds in the account. Yeah, they'll, they'll transfer it into us. I would, we, 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 we the fees that we collect <clears throat> go into the general fund. So as we, if we would overspend our, our um, publication budget, they put money back into it. I would make the motion to pay it. I'll and second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion passes unanimously, okay? Um, I have nothing else. Uh, I didn't put this on the agenda because I didn't think of it, uh, but the uh, select board tomorrow night is holding their tax classification hearing to discuss whether to go to a split rate as they, they have to do this every year. Um, it seems to have a bit more momentum this year because the assessors are uh, pushing for it um, as a way to apparently, you, you probably just have to listen to Dan Zidonic explain it. Um, 
apparently as the um, commercial rates, commercial values are falling and the residential values are climbing, the burden is being shifted more to residential than to commercial. So they are proposing an increase in the commercial rate and a decrease in the residential rate to restore the equilibrium. And reportedly, it will be a short-term solution. And they have to go through this exercise every year and reset or decide whether to set a single rate or a split rate. Um, since it's not on our agenda, we don't, really can't discuss it, um, except in, maybe in very general terms. We certainly can't take any action on it, but I wanted, I know we have in the past expressed opinions about this. So if anybody cares to attend the select board meeting tomorrow night, uh, feel free to do so and express your opinion. Okay. Is, is farmland considered or farmers considered business? or are they not included in the commercial rates? That's a good question. It comes up, but I'm not sure I've ever heard it answered directly. So, so that, several farms in Hat are incorporated. So I would think they're gonna fall under a business rate, but I'm not sure. Well, whether they're incorporated, even if they're not incorporated, they're still actually in business. So a family business. Oh yeah, no, no. But I mean, the, the corporation may specifically decide they're a business, but I don't know that. Yeah. They so have to file their own tax return. That's all. Uh, it's a question for the assessor. I would, I, I, we can certainly ask Dan Zadonic, or someone can ask Dan Zadonic that tomorrow night. Yeah, I. I, I, I plan on, do you know what time, what, where they will be on the agenda bill? I don't. And um, okay. I know that uh, the chairman sometimes moves things around um, quite, you know, take something off the bottom and put it on the top just to get, get through it before a scheduled appointment of some sort. So I don't know if they are posted okay. for a particular time for this. Okay. I would I, I plan on attending if I can make it, yes. I have a conflict from seven on, but earlier I could probably attend. They start at what six thirty? I believe Bill. Uh, well, there's an answer to this. They start at 6 p.m. 6 p.m., okay. All right. And I'll just bring their agenda up and see if it tells me anything. How do we get on the link? Well, it's in the agenda. Okay. Which is in there in the calendar or on there? Should be on the. Do you get a do you get a copy of their agenda emailed to you every week, Bill? Maybe we I, could all get it. No, I don't. You don't. They should do that. I think. I think it's posted on the on the. Just go to the web. Just go to the town clerk website. It's on there. Yeah. I think she has the agenda for any meetings that week, right? <clears throat> Now that I mention it, I see that uh, uh, huh. I thought it was on, but um, they struck it. Well, I, it it does not appear on the agenda, so. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I will, I will find out uh, it, if it is on the agenda. I'll, I'll send an email around to everybody. If, if I'm just not seeing it because I'm sc uh, scrolling too quickly, um, yeah, I'll, I'll verify that. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that, Bill. 
Um, if it doesn't come up until uh, a later meeting, then I'll put it on our next agenda. Okay. So we can take a position on it if we so choose. Okay, that's all I had. Anybody else have anything? Oh. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Media's history, thank you and thank you, John.